How does one rebuild a massive arena without stopping a single game? This is a complete reimagining of the Delta Center, a beloved arena that has long served as the home of the Utah Jazz basketball team. The ambitious goal is to transform this venue into a shared home for two very different sports, the National Basketball Association NBA, and the newly established National Hockey League NHL team, the Utah Mammoth. Engineering the unthinkable While basketball and hockey may share the calendar, they do not share space easily. Professional hockey demands a playing surface that is much larger than a basketball court, requiring wider sight lines for fans, colder temperatures, and strict control over humidity. Most arenas that host both sports are built with hockey as the primary design, making it easier to adapt for basketball. However, the Delta Center was originally built for basketball, meaning its entire layout, from the shape of its seating bowl to its seating structure, had to be completely re-engineered to make hockey work just as seamlessly. This fundamental difference in starting design presented a unique and complex engineering puzzle. One of the most significant upgrades is a brand new, retractable seating system in the lower bowl, the first of its kind. This innovative system can physically shift the seats to create the best layout for either basketball or hockey. It adjusts the height of the seating by nearly 3.7 meters, depending on the sport. The system uses what is called a triple scissor lift technology, designed by Michigan-based StageRight. Imagine multiple layers of giant X shapes stacked on top of each other. These X shapes can expand or contract using hydraulic or pneumatic power, much like how a regular scissor lift works to raise a platform. When the X shapes push outwards, the seats are lifted higher and become steeper, creating the optimal viewing angle for basketball. When they pull inwards, the seats become flatter, perfect for hockey. This allows for a much greater change in seating angle, or rake, than seen in other arenas that switch between sports. This new seating design will also fix many old visibility problems, ensuring that every seat offers better views and more comfort. For hockey games, the seating capacity will significantly increase from just over 11,131 to about 17,000. For basketball, it will increase slightly from around 18,206 to nearly 19,000. At the same time as the seating changes, the entire arena floor is being raised by 0.61 meters. This seemingly small change has a big impact, as it helps improve views from the upper levels of the arena. The overall design strategy is not to force one layout to fit both sports, but to create a flexible new system that gives each game the specific space and clear sight lines it needs for an optimal fan experience. Maintaining perfect ice conditions for hockey requires very specific air conditions inside the arena. If the air is too wet or humid, it can cause several problems. A misty haze or fog can form over the ice, making it difficult for players and fans to see. The ice itself can become soft and bumpy, affecting gameplay and potentially leading to injuries. Furthermore, excess moisture can cause water droplets to condense and drip from the ceiling onto seats and the ice surface, which can lead to mold, corrosion, and damage to the building's structure. To create and maintain high-quality ice, the air temperature inside the building typically needs to be kept between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius, with humidity levels around 40 to 55 percent. The concrete slab floor beneath the ice must be very cold, around minus 9 degrees Celsius. To address these challenges, the renovation includes the installation of four powerful new dehumidifier units. These machines are designed to precisely control the temperature and moisture inside the arena, ensuring the ice stays smooth and consistent regardless of the weather outside. Converting the arena from a basketball court to an ice hockey rink, or vice versa, is a complex operation that needs to happen very quickly, often between games. The Delta Center's operations team has become highly efficient at this process, currently able to change the arena from a basketball court to an ice rink in about eight hours. This is a notable improvement from the initial 12 hours it took when the arena first began hosting NHL games. 
The conversion process involves several key steps. First, the walls and glass panels that surround the ice rink are carefully removed. Next, large, specialized pieces of insulated plywood are laid out directly over the top of the ice. This plywood serves a dual purpose. It keeps the ice cool underneath while providing a warm and stable base for the basketball court above. Finally, the basketball court itself is pieced together on top of the plywood, much like a giant puzzle. These court pieces are very heavy, with a full court weighing many tons, which helps it stay securely in place without sliding on the ice. When it's time to switch back to hockey, the process is simply reversed. The goal is to maintain this rapid change over time even with the newly installed, more complex retractable seating system. Beyond the Bowl the transformation of the Delta Center extends far beyond the interior of the seating bowl. The arena is receiving a brand new main entrance on its east side. This new gateway will connect directly to Salt Lake City's expanding entertainment district and will feature a large outdoor plaza. This plaza is designed to be a vibrant space for fan events, watch parties, and community gatherings, completely changing how fans will arrive and experience game day. The current renovation will also usher the Delta Center into a new era of audiovisual technology, far surpassing anything introduced in previous upgrades. The new systems are designed to support everything from NBA and NHL games to concerts and large-scale performances, aiming to create a fully immersive, high-definition experience for every person in every seat. Previous upgrades in 2017 already included a center-hung scoreboard seven times larger than its predecessor, featuring twin 1080 PhD screens that stretch 12.8 meters along the length of the court and measure 7.3 meters high. New LED light rings and advertising signage were also added to enhance the visual spectacle. Environmental sustainability is a core element of the Delta Center's renovation. The project incorporates energy-efficient systems, measures to conserve water, and the use of recycled materials wherever possible. These initiatives are part of a broader commitment to reduce the venue's ecological footprint and promote sustainable practices within the entertainment industry, contributing to a greener future. The public investment. What truly makes this project monumental is the unique financial and civic partnership that powers it alongside a long-term vision for urban development. In 2024, Salt Lake City approved a small sales tax increase of 0.5% to help fund a new sports, entertainment, culture, and convention district, with the Delta Center at its core. This tax is expected to generate $1.2 billion over 30 years, with $900 million specifically directed to the project. Of this, $525 million is allocated for the arena itself, and $375 million is for the surrounding development. Meanwhile, Smith Entertainment Group (SEG), the private owners of both the Utah Jazz and Utah Mammoth, have committed a substantial $3 billion in private investment to support the district's long-term growth. To protect the city's investment, the agreement includes important non-relocation clauses. If either team leaves within the first 15 years, SEG would owe up to $125 million. If both teams leave, that figure doubles to $250 million. These penalties are designed to keep both franchises rooted in Salt Lake City for the long haul. Public response to this plan has been mixed. Supporters point to the significant economic potential, including increased tourism, job creation, and a downtown area that thrives year-round. City leaders, including Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, have strongly supported the project as a once-in-a-generation opportunity to secure Salt Lake City's place as a major league destination. A legacy built for basketball. The Delta Center first opened its doors in October 1991. Constructed at an impressive speed of just 15 months to replace the city's older Salt Palace Arena. It was specifically designed for the Utah Jazz, a basketball team that was rapidly gaining national attention at the time. With a seating capacity of over 19,000 people and a prime downtown location, the arena quickly became known for its loud, compact design, which gave fans the exciting feeling of being right on top of the action. Throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, the Delta Center hosted a wide variety of events, from thrilling NBA Finals games to figure skating and short track speed skating during the 2002 Winter Olympics. 
It also served as home to other sports teams, including the Women's National Basketball Associations, WNBA, Utah Stars, and the International Hockey League's IHL Utah Grizzlies, alongside numerous major concerts. However, the arena's fundamental design remained centered around basketball. This basketball-first approach, while perfect for the Jazz, created long-term limitations when considering other sports that require different layouts and conditions. The original geometry of the arena was optimized for basketball's steep seating angles and smaller court, which became the root cause of the major engineering challenges that would arise with the introduction of hockey. In 2024, a monumental announcement changed everything for the Delta Center. Utah was awarded a National Hockey League franchise, which would eventually become known as the Utah Mammoth. Smith Entertainment Group, SEG, the owners of both the Utah Jazz and the new NHL team, initiated a full-scale reimagining of the Delta Center. The goal was to make it a seamless shared home for both NBA and NHL games. This dual-sport vision demanded more than just cosmetic changes. Hockey arenas require a completely different geometry compared to basketball venues. They need wider playing surfaces, flatter seating angles for better views of the ice and much tighter climate control to maintain optimal ice conditions. Because the Delta Center was originally built for basketball, its entire layout, from the shape of the seating bowl to the structure of the seats, had to be re-engineered to make hockey work just as well. This fundamental difference in design philosophy meant the transformation would be far more complex than simply adapting a hockey-first arena for basketball. If successful, this project could serve as a groundbreaking model for how aging arenas can be transformed and revitalized, rather than simply replaced. It demonstrates how cities can strategically leverage major sports venues to anchor broader cultural and economic development, turning a sports facility into a catalyst for urban renewal. The project is intrinsically linked to Salt Lake City's ambitions, including the potential for hosting events during the 2034 Winter Olympics, further cementing the arena's role as an economic engine and a symbol of the city's future. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on for more content like this.